Hi guys, we are doing my letterbox recap for April. I got a comment from one of you guys being like, doesn't seem like you had much luck with horror movies. And you were so correct. <laughs> I watched a ton of horror movies this month. All of them except for two are horror movies. I will link my letterbox down below, but we are delving in. First off, we are starting out with Suze. I don't know where I saw this trailer. It might have been on TikTok, but this came out 2023 and it features when her only daughter goes off to university and empty nest mother gets stuck taking care of her daughter's heartbroken ex-boyfriend who she can't stand. It's got Sarah Wayneglass from Jenny and Georgia. It has got, is this her name? Michaela Watkins. She's awesome. Like she's in everything. I gave this three and a half stars. I thought it was like a very real depiction of how you can lose your identity in mothering. This is one of those movies that I didn't expect to give me so many feelings, but that's always been my biggest fear in having kids is losing my identity as like a whole person outside of having children. So anyways, it was a good movie. I enjoyed it and it made me think a lot and I loved the relationship between Suze and Gage. It was just, it was so motherly. And you could see the moment where he's like, oh my God, I've never had like a mother figure. So clearly this is like more of a romantic thing. And she's like, this is literally not like, please relax. And then I watched Frogman. The croaks are no hoax. <laughs> An amateur filmmaker struggling to turn his passion into a career returns home to Loveland with friends determined to obtain irrefutable proof of the cryptic legend that Frogman exists. I gave this two and a half stars. It is a fine found footage movie with a weird concept and okay characters. You definitely have characters that you're like, I don't care about you. I can't wait for you to die. And the actual like Frogman is okay, I guess. It's, better than I expected, but the acting could have been better also. I watched The Possession of Michael King. I gave this two and a half stars, but this is definitely above a frogman. I would, I would bump this up to three stars. This came out in 2014. It has a character from Supernatural in it as well, very briefly, but she's there. The film tells the story of documentary filmmaker Michael King, who doesn't believe in God or the devil. Following the sudden death of his wife, Michael decides to make his next film about the search for the existence of the supernatural, making himself the center of the experiment, allowing de demonologists, necromancers, and various practitioners of the occult to try the deepest and darkest spells and rituals they can find on him. And I mean, not to spoil anything here, if you want to go in totally blind, you want sort of a found footage movie where someone's testing out the occult, skip forward 10 seconds. It works, obviously. This is the possession of Michael King. And it's good. It was like, it was good for a found footage movie. And I feel like there's, there's levels to found footage, right? There's like, oh my God, that's amazing. Hell House, I would say is up there. And then there's like, why was this made? And there's definitely movies that are down there. This is like above average. It is captivating and the concept I thought was very fresh and new. Michael King, the main character here, was captivating as well, if not altogether just a bad father. <laughs> like, why are you testing this out when you have a kid who just lost their mom? Like, go through your grief, but you know, maybe just go to therapy. You don't try to offer demons you. I believe that movie is on Tubi as well. Chest. This was a one and a half star. This is a found footage movie that was shit and I truly don't remember what it was about. So we're going to relearn that together. In 2016, a group of filmmakers disappeared in the mountains of East Tennessee. Three years later, their footage was found. While filming a documentary series about the Appalachian folklore and mythology, a crew of amateur filmmakers, this is a trope that I have been in a lot, amateur filmmakers, uncover the legend of a mysterious box hidden away deep in a wilderness area known as Jeffrey's Hell. As the mystery unfolds, they soon discover that some secrets are best locked away and forgotten based on actual events, which obviously, as we know, is bullshit. The acting of this was dumb. The story was hard to follow. There was no like 
smooth plot. It wasn't like, of course we go from this, the next natural progression is this. It was very just like sporadic, which I can understand if you're doing a found footage, you're like, obviously the whole narration isn't there, but at the same time you're making a movie, so there needs to be some semblance of something making sense, you know? Watched Shortcut, did I not rank this one? I, I did, one star, okay, great. Came out in 2020, this follows five classmates trapped inside their school bus after a mysterious creature invades the road. Time runs and every passing minute decreases their survival chances against the constant threat of that unknown entity. I gave this one star. I feel like the bones were there, but every single time there is a movie about kids on a school bus and then things just going awry, I hate it. I hate it every time. I do not recall one movie except for maybe Jeepers Creepers 2 that I had a good time with kids in a school bus. I think the characters were so tropey. It literally was nerdy girl, pretty girl. Um, there was jock guy who has like a secret heart of gold. It was emo guy who also has a secret heart of gold. It was funny comic relief character. Then you go take a shortcut, which isn't actually a shortcut, it's just a uh, diverted way, diverted route, an alternate route, but I guess that would have been a shit name. It just wasn't good. And then there was one character that was totally unnecessary. I feel like if you can take one character out and nothing changes, they shouldn't be in there. The actual horror and the lore behind this mysterious creature wasn't necessary. There were flashbacks to another person discovering this creature and that was unnecessary. Like this movie could have been something that was very simple but effective, but instead it tried to dilute it with all of these like unnecessary um, branches and it didn't need it and it made it too convoluted and it didn't have the budget or the backbone behind it to support that. I just, I did not like this movie either, so wouldn't recommend. A movie that I did like, this was a shockingly solid movie. It is on Amazon and Tubi and Plex, Mind Games. A group of young friends make an incomprehensible discovery in an abandoned mine, but the more they try to change the future, the more they seal their fate. Was such a solid movie after the last couple that were just boring me to absolute fucking tears. I gave this three and a half stars. So essentially it is like a group of friends going to a cabin in the woods and the friends that they're supposed to meet there have left a note saying that they'll be right back. Okay, their car has broken down because they hit an animal and they go exploring and camping and whatever and they see something that they can't explain in these mines and it's just, it's just a place where paranoia runs wild and they're leaving these messages trying to get them to stop making these certain choices and those messages are what's pushing them to make these choices and it's really just a question of like how many times is this going to happen until somebody breaks the cycle and it was really good and I like how it ended and I like the realization of these things. I just honestly quite enjoyed this movie. I thought it was good. I thought it was effective. It wasn't scary, but it was mind bending. Then I watched Grave Encounters 2. This I gave two stars because it's not as effective as Grave Encounters 1, um, which is a very good found footage movie. This one was, first of all, it had the kid, what's his name? Richard Harmon, I think. He is from The 100, which was a great show for several seasons and then it fell off, but it had him in it. And he very effectively plays a character who is way too fucking into movies. Like, you know that one kid who's at a party because he literally did this in this movie and all he did was get drunk and talk about horror movies and how horror is shit now? That's annoying don't be that guy. But he is also so obsessed with watching the first Grave Encounters and thinking that it's real that he like flies to LA, tracks down the guy who produced and like executed this and he's like, I know it's real. And he's like, you can't prove it though. He's like, I'm gonna prove it. And that's what gets them back into this house. I would watch both of them. I would make it like a Grave Encounters one and two evening, but it's certainly in comparison to the first movie, not awesome. It came out in 2012 and it follows 
Tortured by the ghosts of a demonized insane asylum that killed the crew of Brave Encounters, film students fight to escape the death of their own paranormal investigation as it goes terribly wrong in this horrifying sequel. I mean, not as good as the original, still an effective movie, even though it's a two, that's just for the acting, really. Um, the visuals were fine. You do have a return character from the first movie, but Overall, not as good. Good enough to watch, though. Late Night with the Devil. I was so excited. I've heard a ton about this. It came out on Shutter recently. A live television event that shocked a nation. A live broadcast of a late night talk show in 1977 goes horribly wrong, unleashing evil into the nation's living rooms. The acting of this film was awesome. It was so effective. The host really, really carried it. And then the child actor was super effective. Everybody played their roles perfectly. The acting was dope. The ending was super, super clever and fresh. Obviously there's controversy with this movie using AI, which I just, I feel like that is kind of a step too far. It's a really risky thing. Like if you use it a little bit here, what's to stop you from doing a whole movie with this instead of like hiring people who are very talented in that. And I feel like that takes away the heart of horror. And for that reason, I did rank it a little bit lower. Also, the, I feel like there could have been a couple more scares. Overall, very effective movie, very fun to watch, something that I would definitely add into like a yearly rewatch rotation. I just think that hopefully the response to the movie and the uproar about the use of AI was enough that people heard and don't continue to use it. You mean, I am going to do a full breakdown review on this movie, so stay tuned for that, but I did give it two and a half stars. This is a movie that I was really excited to have come out and I have a lot of thoughts on it. I watched Immaculate, fucking finally. The latter half of this month was a lot better for horror than the beginning bit. I gave this three and a half stars. I went in completely blind. I had only seen like the blood screaming like clip and I had only seen her in that like beautiful kind of blue little number. I didn't know what this was about and I appreciate that because Reading about it gives away nothing. Not every intervention is divine. Cecilia, an American nun of devout faith, embarks on a new journey in a remote convent in the picturesque Italian countryside. Cecilia's warm welcome quickly devolves into a nightmare as it becomes clear her new home harbors a sinister secret and unspeakable horrors. And it does. The tension in this movie, amazing. The use, Sydney Sweeney, is such a talented actress, especially when it comes to those moments of like real intensity, of real just like long shots on her face. You feel what she's feeling. She just immerses herself so totally and wholly in the role and it's amazing. And I only clocked into the name and how it connected like halfway through the movie and I was like, oh, you dumb bitch. But it was really good. I would definitely watch this again. I was watching this with my cousin and her boyfriend and they came in like halfway through the movie and they were like, whoa, what the fuck? And it was, it was good. It was great. I really, really liked this and I am not a fan of like religious horror all the time. I think that there's a way to do it right, a way to do it effectively, a way that it isn't like pandery to either side, but this was just wholly entertaining. And I, oh, there were moments of just pure, like you go girl. And we finished off the month with Bo Burnham inside. Sometimes you're just in the mood for some Bo Burnham. And this, every time I watch this, I just get actual physical chills on how talented this man is. I have watched this before and rated this before. I've raised it up to a 4.5. There are very few things that I watch more frequently and raise the score up because I'm just constantly impressed. But this is just so good. If you haven't seen this, this is the special that Bo Burnham created in COVID-19 lockdown. And it took him about a year. He did it in like his little like shed off of his house. And it is a amazing it's so good every time i watch it i'm like are you okay but also make so much more content please
I will see you on the weekend for the Humane Review, and then hopefully I will have a book recap done very soon because I finished one, but I have three on the go. So we're gonna get to it. I love you all. I will see you very soon. Bye, guys.